Because the game sometimes comes up in online conversation when people talk about the best movie games ever made. It doesn't come up as frequently as some of the heavy hitters, you know, like GoldenEye, King Kong, or Riddick, but as far as I can tell, this game is considered to be surprisingly good. Prior to making this video, I hadn't played it beyond a very, very vague memory, so I had the pleasure of taking a look at this with fresh eyes and seeing if it really is a good game, or if everyone just loved it because they played it as a kid. Speaking of rose-tinted glasses, I was 10 years old when Cars came out, and we used to have a very dodgy pirated DVD of the movie that I would watch over and over. I know it ain't the most well-regarded Pixar movie, but I loved it nonetheless, like, it's probably my favourite one, you know, though The Incredible certainly could be, and hearing that this game is a well-regarded racer that has an open-world rendition of Radiator Springs had the 10-year-old inside me all excited to finally give it a play. The game opens quickly with Mater setting the stage for the Radiator Springs Grand Prix, and you're thrust into a race. Right off the bat you can see that they got the look of it about as right as you can for a 2006 game. Uh, the colours and animation are pleasing and bouncy, and they've done the mouthing surprisingly well. I got a lot of visual glitches throughout the game, which are probably there because I'm running this on a newish Windows 10 PC, and a lot of the textures leave a lot to be desired considering how old this is, but altogether, it looks good. So how about the driving? Well, on first impressions, I was pretty unsure about it. I never got used to the camera where it's either way too close, pointed down too much, or if it's on the bumper, it's way too low. There's no real comfortable choice, so I found myself switching between them throughout the game. I also found the physics felt a little bit weird and slow, which was a bit disappointing because this game was developed by Rainbow Studios. They are a THQ-owned Phoenix-based dev who'd been releasing some reasonably popular, albeit budgety races, like Motocross Madness, Splashdown, and the sequel to Star Wars Episode One Racer that I always forget exists. They also started their long-running series MX vs ATV a year earlier in 2005, a series which is still going to this day as Rainbow Studios, now owned by THQ Nordic, recently released the latest game in the series, MX vs ATV All Out, just last year. Even though I haven't really sunk my teeth into any of their other games, I figured that they were an ideal choice to develop this game, and I thought that the driving would feel pretty damn good, especially as they have a lot of experience with off-road racing, and Cars was developed on their in-house engine. So opening the game and it feeling a bit meh was a little disappointing to say the least, but this feeling did wear off as I dug into the game for a couple of reasons. Oh, and just quickly, if you're wondering why McQueen looks so funky sometimes, uh, you can change between a handful of paint jobs in this game if you want to and just completely ruin what he looks like. The first reason the driving grew on me is that the game gives you a wealth of mechanics to start playing with. There are at least four ways to take a corner in this. You can slow down with a regular brake and turn, which if you do you're really boring. Uh, you can use a drift using the power slide, which feels kind of like the drifting in Burnout. You can and handbrake turn for a tighter drift, or you can go full midnight club and go on two wheels on your side for that really tight turn, but it's like far more risky. Uh, all of this gives it a lot more flavor and keeps you more engaged, and you can also pull the stick down and flick it up like an ollie and skate to do a jump, which is really fun because you can absolutely launch yourself off things. One for the lady. On top of this, the further you go through the game, the more the levels lean into these mechanics. They start very wide and open, and honestly, they mostly remain very wide and open even towards the end, but they do start throwing in some tighter roads and corners, and even some opportunities where you need to jump to reach a shortcut, which is really neat. Unfortunately, it doesn't lean into this stuff nearly enough, though. I can't recall any tight hairpin turns or even many 90 degree turns. It's all pretty easy going, which obviously is expected for a kid's game. While I like how Cars the Game takes advantage of how cartoony it is with all these cheesy mechanics, they're again a little too simple for my liking. It's fine for a kid's game, obviously, but remember how the movie had that mantra, turn right to go left? That's what we in the biz call counter-steering, and the game repeats the mantra multiple times too, but the drifting itself pretty much straightens up on its own. It would have been cool if this game taught the kids some basics about drifting and physics, but, you know, it's a kid's game. Speaking of physics, that's another spot where this game can feel a little whack. You know when racing games can just feel a bit unnatural, like the turning isn't quite right somehow and you can't put your finger on why. This game has that, but only very, very, very slightly. To the point where you can get used to it and forget about it, but I still wish it wasn't there. Also, the crashing generally doesn't feel right at all, and it can be really unreliable, which is a shame. Anyway, Getting back on track, no pun intended, you win the Radiator Springs Grand Prix, but it turns out it was all just a dream. Set after the film, McQueen wakes up at the Cozy Cone Motel, and after chatting with Sally and Mac, McQueen realizes he's been slacking off a bit and wants to get back into the scene, so it's time to practice and shape enough around town. This is the game's overarching excuse for sending you on random activities and helping out the residents of the town, which is something that is very cars. The game is broken up into five chapters, where in each chapter you complete missions to earn trophies, which eventually unlock a Grand Prix stadium race. 
You unlock two more parts of the map as you go through, and it's a simple structure, but it works really well because virtually everything you do progresses you in the game. It kind of reminds me of Burnout Paradise in that way. There's not really side missions and a main story, it's all just the game, and that's really fantastic. That's not to say that there aren't missions that may as well be side missions. Uh, the ones where you play as other characters are often obviously filler content. One has you playing as the little Italian car, collecting tires in a long series of missions, uh, and another you play as Mater waking up, tractors, and it's a stealth thing, but it's really clunky, and and it doesn't control like the rest of the game. They feel like they're in the game for people who want to 100% it or have finished it and just want more to do and they don't really reward you as much with that many trophies so I didn't like them, they're kind of boring. Uh, I didn't mind the one where you play as the police car chasing down suspects though. I found that to be decent fun. The more thought out missions are really fun ways to interact with the characters. The Sarge sends you through his boot camp, George Carlin's stoner combi gives you some of his special brew which turns out to be boost, another interesting mechanic which adds depth to the racing, and your groupies follow you around everywhere and try and race you. Cars was kind of weird, right? Like, I never questioned this stuff as a kid, but man, this ain't like other Pixar movies. There's like stoners and groupies. I don't know what's going on. Basically, all the cutscenes are quick little gags, and it's really endearing. It can be awkward, but I was surprised that this game got more than a few laughs out of me. Check it out. So, big deal. Well, you know, I just figured you might want to get acquainted with the view. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, because you're going to be spending a lot of time behind me. In the race. We're going to be in the race and I'll be ahead of you and we'll be behind me. In the race! Is it me? Is it, what are we not getting here? It's good stuff, right? And that was actually Michael Keaton voicing that. Amazingly, they seem to get every single member of the voice cast in this game. Uh, Owen Wilson's here, Bonnie Hunt, Larry the Cable Guy, Michael Keaton, as we just saw, George Carlin, Paul Newman. Uh, legit every single cast member is here and it's amazing. I'm not sure any other movie game can say the same thing. Owen does sound a little overly tired the whole time, but it's still just so charming that they've all gone that extra mile and I enjoyed the game that much more because of it. And like, most of the cast actually went all in and just did a fantastic job. It's really, 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 really good. Hey, Fillmore, what's cooking? A new batch of special brew, my friend. As with most good movie games, you know, the few of them that there are, uh, it's that extra mile and longer development period that makes them something special. Like with Avatar, the developers worked really closely with the film studio to make sure that this was a quality product. Uh, there's a detailed and very candid interview with lead designer Jordan Itkowitz on a website called Ain't It Cool News, which is absolutely worth a read. Um, I don't know what this website is and it has no comments and it's from 2006 and it's still really good. You should go check it out. A link is below in the description. According to the interview, Pixar were completely happy to communicate and share out and ideas with Rainbow Studios throughout the entire development period. All the voice work was directed in the recording studio by Pixar's Joe Ranft, the co-director and co-writer of the movie, which, along with the fact that every cutscene had to go through an approval process, is a lot of the reason why the cutscenes are so good. Tragically, Ranft passed away before the film or games were released, both of which were dedicated to him. The game has 14 new characters that weren't in the movie, and they're all by Pixar rather than Rainbow, so they're all pretty well done. Uh, many of them were actually early concept characters from the movie, like the monster truck Count Spatula and the British Gentleman Racers, who were so seamless that I actually thought that they were from the movie. I guess that shows how hazy my memory is. Uh, Joe Ranft, lead artist Steve Purcell, known for creating the Sam and Max series, and Cars' acclaimed director John Lasseter, who did some real creepy things and thankfully got fired for it recently, are widely responsible for all this good creative content in the game, and even helped a lot with the scenarios, like the pretty fun Rust Bucket Racerama where Mater races all of his hillbilly cousins. Combine these guys with the amazing voice cast and the decently experienced game studio, and it goes to show how much talent was behind this entire project. One of my personal favourite scenes had you playing as the four JDM cars stealing from Mac while he's highway driving. You weave through traffic one by one, each working together to steal boxes out of the back of the truck while a very 90s simple electronic beat blasts in the background. It's the only time you play as the bad guys in the game, so it's a little out of place, but I think that the developers probably liked it so much that they just kept it in, because it's, it's, a, it's a throwback to the scene at the start of the Fast and the Furious, and I really like the Fast and the Furious so this had me grinning ear to ear. Uh, this game is filled with like neat little concepts like this throughout and it's it's fun to stumble upon each one. Something on the style side that doesn't quite hit the mark is the soundtrack. At times it fits great with old Americana kind of music from Lynyrd Skynyrd and Los Lobos, but mixed into this is some generic boring rock-ish music that was made for the game, as well as a whole bunch of pop punk. Now I grew up with the Tony Hawk games, I love me some pop punk, but I would have rather it just stuck with Americana the whole time because it fits so much better. Also this has an instrumental version of Here I Am by The Explosion, that song from Burnout 3 and Thug 2, and it's really kind of weird. So you go throughout the campaign, hanging out with 
all the characters in cars and earning trophies until you unlock a piston cup, the big events that tide you through to the next chapter. These are honestly kind of boring, but there's only five of them throughout and they feel epic enough to warrant their existence. They've done a surprisingly good job of making these stadiums feel huge and they worked well as ways to cap off each chapter. That is, until I did my second one, went out of bounds, got glitched out in a respawn loop and quit the game to find out that my save was corrupted. After losing two hours, and at the risk of this happening again, I decided I'd wake up real early the next day and play through the game in a single sitting, taking about four hours. As expected, after finishing the game my new save was also corrupted. Couple this with all the visual glitches, and the way to go is definitely with the Xbox 360 version, which being released later has some additional minigames and very slightly improved graphics. I, I even got the Steam version, which they're still selling but it's just completely broken, don't even bother. My biggest gripe with this is the incredibly easy difficulty. On my first playthrough, I didn't come first just twice, like I came first in every single event except for two. And in those races, I came second once and third the other time, and that got me enough trophies to not worry about needing to even try it again. To not come first, I had to screw up real hard throughout the race and at the end, and I kind of enjoyed it more because at least I felt something. You know it's bad when you kind of enjoy screwing up just so it gives the game some life. And I know, it's a kid's game, of course it's gonna be easy, but like, this is next level. When I was a kid, I had to beat that tutorial level in Driver or grind away at Alien Hominid. Hell, kids these days are amazing at Fortnite, right? It gets even more trivial when you get the boost and start upgrading it. Uh, here I am, a 22-year-old man yelling at a 13-year-old Disney game for 6-year-olds for it being too easy. What has my life become? You've likely noticed that I've been scoring points for pulling off power slides and doing big jumps and going through shortcuts, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, you can also get points through collectibles, which are everywhere, but unfortunately these points are just used to unlock concept art and videos and cars for the other game modes, like the arcade and versus modes, so they don't really affect the game. It'd be neat maybe if it filled up your boost or something, but it just refills over time. Uh, they did include this mechanic where you can spin the car into reverse and it inverts your steering to score points, which is hilariously smug. I often found myself using it when I was so far ahead that I had nothing else to do. Returning to that interview with the lead designer, he says that this game is aimed at 6 to 12 year olds, which gave me an existential crisis, and he then goes on to say, we had to give this game a gentler default difficulty than we're used to shipping. We still want a challenge though, and so we added a more difficult version of the story mode, where the races are much more competitive. Players can create a new profile and call it champion. Now this is definitely how you should play this game, and this is definitely how your kids should play this game, unless they're like very, very young. Though it does make the AI a lot better than they were before, the game is still unfortunately crazy easy with this trick, but it at least punishes you when you screw up heavily. Like I wish it were better, but this single trick brings this game up quite a bit for me. And the crazy thing is, this trick is actually very, very unknown. Almost every single site I came across had Champion listed as a cheat code when it's not, it's actually a profile name that you need to enter before starting the game. Like, look for yourself, it's listed everywhere as a cheat except for two obscure-ish sites I found from 2006, one of them being this very interview. Even a wiki for the Cars game has it listed as a rumoured false cheat. Now I'm not being smug or anything, but I'm gonna be smug as right now because I feel like I've basically uncovered a major improvement to this game just through researching its development. Like seriously, this is the best way to play this game and it needed some real digging to stumble across it. If you're keen to play this, go to the options menu before starting, start a new profile and call it champion without an A. Thank me later. Anyway, after finally catching up to where I was and beating the second Piston Cup race, I returned to Radiator Springs to what was probably my favourite moment in this entire game. This is what stuck with me the most when I finished up, it's probably going to be my main memory of this game, and that is how well they've captured Radiator Springs at night time. It just glows in all the right ways, the night sky and desert are both brilliantly coloured and the town feels warm, and it looks really fantastic. Uh, this video really doesn't do it justice. And this is when it really clicked for me about how good this game is for Cars fans. For a moment here, I kind of forgot I was an adult and just enjoyed the fact that I could explore the world of cars and hang out with all the characters. I almost felt like I was 10 years old again, popping in that pirated DVD from Bali into my PS2 and watching it on the family CRT. It's crazy that this elicited that feeling from me. It was a similar feeling to when I went to Cars Land in Disneyland, and really what more could you ask for from a kid's game? Well. Once I snap out of that trance, I can't say I'm not disappointed by a couple of things. The first being, I wish the story were a little tighter. It's full of charm and you progress through it at a good pace, but nothing is really tying the missions together to one another, and there's no overarching story beyond Chick occasionally turning up to taunt you, which eventually culminates in a fun enough finale where you race across all the areas in the game. I know asking for something like character progression is far too much for this, but um, just something more to tie it all together would be nice. Like this is absolutely a case of me having unrealistic expectations, but I feel like this game is 
is competent enough and well made enough to actually pull off some better emotional highs and lows throughout its story that it never really tries to do. It's kind of a minor thing, but it would have helped push it over the edge into something amazing for me. The second thing that really bummed me out that I know I kind of just mentioned earlier, but I really want to emphasize it, is the extremely easy difficulty. Like races can go on for so long where you're 30 seconds ahead of second place and I feel like I'm falling asleep. I'm very impressed by this product as a whole and even knowing that I'm far too old for this, I just can't help but feel like this is a bit of a deal breaker. If the champion mode offered up a challenge, it would be more engaging and I'd heavily recommend this and easily slot it up there with some of the best movie games ever made. But um, I can't and it's disappointing. I'm both disappointed and impressed at the same time. I, I guess you could say I'm depressed. But seriously, if you or your kid is a huge Cars fan, then this game is a real treat. It can feel a bit dodgy at times, but you can tell that a lot of care went into it and it's far, far better than your average tie-in game. They could have easily half-assed it and it would have sold well on the brand, but they didn't and it's awesome. I can't recommend it beyond anyone who is super into the movie though, which is frustrating because if they changed a few things, I would recommend it in a heartbeat, but as it stands, I enjoyed my time with Cars the game and I'm glad I chose to play it, even if I'm way older than 12 years old. So what happened after all this? Well, quite a lot actually. Obviously Cars 2 and 3 had their own games, but before Cars 2, Rainbow Studios actually followed this game up a year later with a direct sequel called Cars Made a National Championship that is by all accounts very similar. Two years after that, we saw a third game in the series called Cars Race O-Rama, which runs on the same engine, but was developed by a different THQ subsidiary called Incinerator Studios. I'm curious to see how these games build upon this game, and if there's some demand for it, I'll check them out on this channel too. There was also a whole bunch of online browsers games, and there was an activity pack game for really young kids called Cars Radiator Springs Adventures. Uh, there was also the whole bunch of like handheld versions of all these games as well, so you know there's like a million Cars games. At one point they even tried to do a Cars browser based MMO predictably called The World of Cars Online. Uh, I have way less curiosity to check out all this stuff, but hey it's interesting to look at from afar. So yeah, with that kind of wraps up my experience of Cars the Game. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, let me know if you want me to check out any more games in this series or any more games in general. Uh, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Hit subscribe and check out some of my other stuff if you'd like, I'd also appreciate that. Um, take it easy and have a good one.